thank you to Margaret Allen for allowing us to come to your home and to, to interview. I thought a lot of them hated you know, the two blues, but uh, thank you again. So, Alan, uh, my first question is, I guess, there's been three generations of, of Manette's play rugby for Parramatta. Most of your adult life, you've either worked for them or played for them. Can you tell us a little bit about yeah, well, where you started and how it all began? Well, as far as the family goes, my father played with the club in mid-40s and then um, I started playing with the club in uh, about 57 and my uh, other brother, one of my brothers, John, he played with the club and Rob, another brother, played with the club. Uh, my two sons, Craig and Scott, both played with the club. Craig played over 200 games, and Scott played pretty close to 200 games. And my uh, son-in-law, Greg Milburn, he played a real lot of games with the club, and I worked it out that we played well over a thousand games between us. That's amazing. Yeah. And I guess leading into that, we were just talking that... Uh, you met Margaret at the at the, at the rugby club, and, and her brothers also played first grade for Parramatta too. Yeah, one of Margaret's brothers played first grade, Dennis Dennis Rose, and three of her other brothers played with the club. That's why I met Margaret for that. Yeah. And then you, you met Margaret um, at the, the rugby club too, rugby club. and her brother also played. Two brothers played. For yeah, Parramatta. Margaret's brother Dennis. He um, played first grade with the club. And three of her other brothers played with the club too. And I guess that going right back to now that we're at, at um, play at uh, yeah, Marion Sarasol Rugby Park, the Granville Park. You actually grew up in the street. Yeah, I grew up in Melbourne Avenue, which runs into Granville Park, about a hundred yards from the park, from the ground itself. Yeah, yeah. you haven't moved far. So no, well, we're here in Greystone, so they reckon you only move ten kilometres from where you grew up. That's right. I, and when we got married, we not long after we got married, we moved here. We've been here for forty years. So then, in '57, when you started, so you started with Parramatta then, and you were telling me a story. Where the reason you went to Parramatta, you were playing cricket. Yeah, well, in in those days, um, the only the only people who went to Parramatta were from Parramatta High School because Parramatta High School was the only team in the district. Played rugby, and when they they used to finish at the high school, they used to go and play their rugby at Parramatta. And I was playing cricket with Alan Morgan, and uh, he was going to go over and try out with Parramatta for Parramatta with the high school fellas. And so I thought oh, I'd like to do that because my father had played, and I, cried, I went over there, and that's when I started off. Yeah. Okay, so then you said you went to. Go to, to Parramatta West and, and uh, Parramatta Intermediate High, you then, you, your father was a, uh, had his own produce firm or whatever, and you, you, yeah. when you left school you started working so, with him? Yeah, worked with him until the um, Parramatta got, got the legal license for the rugby club and I was offered the job there. So I started there a week before the club opened and I stayed there till I retired six years ago. So that opened in 1965? 65, yeah. 65. So that was the licensed club? Uh, yeah. So was there, what was there before then? Was there, did they own the land then or the house? Uh, the the ha one? Sorry. The house was um, owned by the Rebellions and the club bought, bought the block of land and, and built the club and Ivan Mann, who uh, is second to me on the first grade list, he was a builder, he built the he was the one who built the club. I've heard when the, we saw let the club go to Parramatta that one of the reasons we didn't demolish it is that the piers are so deep that it costs us too much money to take them out because the Ivan had done such a good job as a builder. <laughs> so well, <laughs> well when, when the club was built, I think it was built how they could go an extra... An extra, an extra two or three storeys. Two, yeah. Okay, well, which is really... So that was in 65, and then you they offered you a job... 
I said, it's Richard from 1965 to 2008 that you worked at. I worked at the club, yeah, till okay. I retired. Okay. So you, you know lots and lots of stories. <laughs> no one tells us you've told us none, but anyway, <laughs> we, might, we might get a few today. Um, getting back to that two, starting 57, you played 343 games altogether. Grade games all together. Yeah. And 293 first grade games. First grade games, yeah. So you're the highest, uh, yeah, well, you're going to be a bit hard to beat now, isn't it? Yeah. Andrew Cox, our present captain, is probably the only one who's got a chance yeah. of doing it. Andrew would be the only one who's, yeah. At, at 27. 27, yeah. And then Ivan Mann was about 281. Oh, yeah. He built, built the rugby club. Yeah, he, he's, sec he's second, yeah. What amazing. And, in, and for, for grade games, uh, Dave Bird, you think it's about 250 or something, or? Yeah, he, 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 kept playing, he kept playing until he, he passed the record, yeah. Good, good sir. Okay, I guess in that time, you've looked at, what, what were your rep on us You've played Sydney and New South Wales? Yeah, there was, yeah, and Barbarians. In those days, there was a fair few little rep games like North and South Harbour and Sydney and and uh, one of the strangest games I played in was I played in Sydney in, in uh, I think it was 66. That up to then, uh, the Sydney competition was run by, by New South Wales and Sydney decided to have their own, run their own competition. So they started the Sydney comp and I was picked in the first side to represent Sydney. And it was against Ireland, and the game. When when the team was picked, there was no jumpers for Sydney because it was their first team. So they decided to play in a white set of jumpers that they had, and they give it to one lady to uh, wash, and she she washed them in bleach. And uh, when we started playing, of course, all the jumpers started ripping and falling apart. And uh, people running off, changing jumpers. And it was a really, really funny game. And in the end, it got that bad in the end. I finished up with a referee's jumper on. And, but at half time, they'd gone through so many jumpers. The Sydney Boys High School, which was just across the road, they played in, a white, in white jumpers. So in the end, they finished up turning over to them, getting a set of jumpers from them, and bringing them back and putting them on us. Was the only way they could get through the game. Would have been, you know, City Boy High, but would have been big enough? <laughs> yeah. uh, I played 293 first grade games. I, 1960 was my first game, and I finished up playing in the grand final in 1975. It was my last game. Okay. And then there was 343 club games. Club games, and that's from when you started in 57. The other milestone you've got too, you have 151 games as first grade captain. That's right, yeah. And that was continuous? Continuous, yeah. I took over from Roddy Phelps when he, when he retired and I went up to 73 and I, uh, Ricky Andrews captain the side in 74, 75. Okay. So that's 151 James is first round captain. That's right, yeah. And, and last week against Gordon, Andrew Cox, our captain, who's 27, captain's captain 100 for first round yeah. games. Yeah. So he's probably about the only person that could break the record. That's right. Well. You would have played in, in, in the days when we got a bit of a tallying, like we, we have in the last couple of years, and then as towards the end of your career, we, we started to, to really start to pick up. So can you tell us a little bit a little bit about that? Yeah, well, early in the piece when I first started playing with the club, we used to finish towards the bottom nearly all the time. And then uh, Roddy Phelps came over from, from North Sydney. He was the Australian centre. And uh, he made a big difference and we had a pretty good period while he was there. But then when he retired... He, uh, the club dropped away again and we were we finished last a few times and we were down the bottom. So when, when would he retire from playing? So he coached like 70, 72? Yeah, it would have been um, 
mid sixties, I'd say. You retired. Okay. And, and um, uh, after when he started coaching, we we started to get a lot of juniors through from from Parramatta Juniors, and that's when the club lifted again, and that's when we started to go well. And because Eric Quidell takes a lot of pride in the fact that he was one of the initiators in, in starting the the Parramatta Juniors, and I guess you've seen now with premierships and things like that, and rep, rep, representative on us that come all the way through with the juniors, and that's been our strength. Yeah. What once we once the juniors started to come, we started to get players through the juniors. That's when the club really lifted, and it's bad luck now that a lot of our juniors that come through finish up going to other clubs, and they don't come through to Parramatta because I think Parramatta have more juniors, top juniors, than any other of the districts, but. We seem to lose them all before they come to our club. Okay. And the other one talked about Rod Phelps as being, you know, one of the, the uh, initiators, I guess, of that, that cultural change to, to winning and things like that. You played with him as a player. Is he you, the best player you've ever played with? Or? Yeah, well, he, he was outstanding. I think, I think he was named in um, about three years ago. They put out a team to represent Australia right from the start of Australian rugby and he was named the reserve in that side, that's how good he was. And him and Ray Price just stood out as far as I'm concerned as I played with that Parramatta. Did Ray Price make that team, the model team for the rugby? I guess no, no, I don't think so, no. But his lead connection might have been that. And I guess that gets back to uh, when did Ray Price came through, or the, the Michael would have come first, and then Ray, or did they come together? No, Michael had a couple of years first, and then Ray came. And then and Ray, would have, yeah, Ray would have come early 70, 71 or something, I'd say. Okay. And then I guess the other players that you played with too was Ken Catchpole. I played with Ken Catchpole in a few uh, rep games, and Ken Catchpole, he was terrific. He was a great footballer. He'd be the best outside of those two. Outside Ray. And why, what, what, what about, you said then, Ricky Andrews took over from you as captain. You know, having played with Rick at, you know, in my younger years, I thought you know, he was an outstanding player. But, you know, he's a, one of those unfortunate people I think should have been picked for Australia. Yeah, Ricky Andrews should have been picked. I think he played for the state, but he should have, been, he should have got higher. And he, in those days... And if you came from Parramatta, you were flat out trying to get in any rep games. And it took someone like Ray Price, who was just so good, yeah, that they had to pick him. Stand up and pick, yeah. pick him. Uh, I guess the other two, and we're, we're leading into uh, your, your first grand final in, 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 in 1974 when we uh, you know, uh, got beaten in the grand final of minor premiers, is that those, those players, uh, things like, Ricky Andrews were in the side, Ray Price was in the side, uh, Greg Hackett, uh, Rod Batterhan, who came across from, from Gordon, from, from, from Gordon and played for Australia. What, what are your memories of that, you know, that, first, that first grand final and then you leading up to it? Yeah, the memories. We were well, we were well in the game right up to the last little bit and we got beat, we got beat 10-9 at the end. Um, leading up to it, uh, we, we were a bit lucky we won the minor premierships that year. It was the first time Parramatta had ever won the minor premiership. And uh, one of the reasons we won it, it was the second last game of the season. We were, we were playing Gordon. And they scored a try right on the bell and they had to kick it to, to win the game. And the try was right underneath the post. And as, as they lined up to kick it, our front row ran out and kicked the ball off the off the mound and they reset it and the kicker came in and missed it. Yeah, that was uh, Malcolm Jack and uh, the person with Michael Bull. Michael Bull was the player who, who kicked it off off the mound yeah. and we win, finished up winning the minor, minor premiership by one point. So if they would have won that, if we would have lost that game, we wouldn't have won the minor premiership. So. That's amazing. Yeah, standards too. I guess we're, Randwick always the benchmark. I mean, we, we got, having played, I started in 74 with you, Randwick, we were never fearful of We seemed to be able to, one of the few clubs that actually could, could take it to them. One, one of the things about our grand final that um, was against us was that 
we got out the ground about half an hour or so before we had to get ready. And um, what happened was that two of the early games went to extra time and first grade finished up kicking off about 40 minutes late. So we were sitting out there for all that time where Ramwick only lived five minutes away from from the ground. They, they knew about this and they, they left. They didn't arrive to the, about an hour after us out mm -hmm. the ground. So they were sitting around waiting for the grand final to start like we were. And I think that had a bit to do, to do with the result. Yeah, I would imagine so too. So then the next year, again, um, in 75, we didn't we didn't win the minor premiership in 75, did we? No. No, we ran second and we played Ramwick in the semi-final. The major semi, and we beat we beat Ramick in the major semi. Yeah, and then and then and then uh, North beat Ramick. So North would have taken out Western Suburbs first, would they? Not? The minor semi. I'm just trying to remember where too because that was the day of the big packs, wasn't it? Yeah, they outweighed us <coughs> two or three stone per two player, I reckon, on that day. Yeah, and then North North virtually yeah. played nine nine man rugby. Yeah, in the seventy five round. Well, they said they were so much heavier than us. They just kept the ball in the forwards and and just wore us down. Even then, it, they it, they didn't hit the front till two minutes ago. They kicked a penalty goal to, to hit the front with two minutes to go. So with, with our small pack, we really you know we really put it to them. Because the way they packed too, and I, I just watched the seventy five grand final recently. You know that legends. And they packed down very quickly and just drove. Yeah. And, and even you were so close to the ground, I don't even know how the ball went. Yeah, the, yeah they made it really hard. Yeah. But what, what they did more than anything was they'd get the ball in a ruck and they just wouldn't let it out. They'd just keep pushing and pushing and pushing, you know, and they tried to wear us down. But we stuck with it right to the end, but we just yeah. penalty goal beat us at the end. Yeah. Dickie, Dickie Byers was the referee. Your mate, your mate, Dickie Bryce. Yeah, Ru Ru I, I know that um, Bruce Pitt was the one who got the penalty. I don't think Bruce Pitt was offside, but anyway, I'm just going to put that on record. But Dick reckoned I was offside. I said I was, he was inside me. He reckoned I was offside too. And I reckon I was packed into a ruck. But anyway, yeah. that's fine. Boy. <laughs> I guess the, the next part now, in out of that grand final and having played with you in that time, I remember looking at your face and you was ashen. I guess, yeah, having talked to you, it, it was... Sapping for you not only being your last game, but the, the, the chance to... Yeah. Well, when we played Ramwick in the grand final, we weren't expected to win, really. Even though we beat them in the semis, we weren't expected to win. But against North, we were expected. We were favourites to win that game. And, and I think that was between that and being my last game. It was a bit hard to take. Yeah. I know the difference in, in 1974 was that... Um, that the Parramatta had never been to a grand final, put every put, put brand new jerseys on everybody. And by 75, they woke up that you didn't do that because they either got stolen or yeah. swapped. <laughs> yeah, well, matter of fact, I've still got the two jumpers from the grand final against from the opposition team. Okay. That we swapped after the game. We've got the ring again, the North jumper that we swapped after the game. Yeah. Cause that that uh, North Sydney pack, I mean, you've got uh, Red Smith and Garrick Fay were two Australian players. Uh, Peter Carson, Australian player. Mm. Did Andy Stewart, the breakaway, did he play? I don't know. I think he did. Tom, was it Thompson, one of the front rowers? Tom, was yeah, it? John, I don't know. Johnson. Yeah. Johnson, yeah. And that Med, Peter Medway, I think, played New South Wales. But they, were, they, they weren't any slouches. Mm. I thought their outside backs weren't much. But no, their back, right. yeah. But just, yeah, their forward, would you say, being uh, strong? I guess, too, from you know, being a true blue man, like, you know, it's a wonder you're. you're Blood doesn't run blue. Is that you also when you retired then went down as timekeeper and scorer at the, 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 the rugby park? Yeah, I followed the club ever since. Ever since I retired, I always go down there. We used to always go to the away games and everything, but now I just go down to and watch them play in their home games. Yeah. And, uh, so, so, how do you see the change now? So, from when I guess the dark days when you were playing, I guess in the early you know early sixties and things like that, and then we started becoming good. Do you see us coming back? you see a change now in the last couple of years? Well, the game's so different now to when I play because when I play, we all play for the fun of it. We never got paid. 
now they're getting paid and it's just whichever club whichever club's got the most money do the best these days I, I see with whoever can buy the players and get the good players who are going to finish on top I know we the bottom line with Parramatta is developing a community club and, and, and giving, I guess, what we offer now is the opportunity to play first grade. I mean, I guess that's what we, we offer to the, the, the to our players. So I don't know where it's going to lead to, but how do you how do you feel? Yeah, I, I think they're doing a good job down there now, the way they have players uh, going to TAFE and getting scholarships and things like that, which I think is only going to help the club and it's really good. So the players can yet get this out of it. So what do you think about us having uh, women's rugby too? That wasn't when you first started. <laughs> no, well, there was never, never any women's rugby, but if they play the game and enjoy it, good luck to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, any, any sport you can play and enjoy it, well, it's great. Uh, I, on your wall, it's a little bit difficult to see because of the way we're filming, but you have uh, three jerseys, uh, a Parramatta jersey, a New South Wales jersey, and an all-black jersey. The first question I'd like to ask you about was the, 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 the Parramatta uh, jersey, what the significance of it is, and could you also explain um, the numbering system when you play? The Parramatta jersey is just one that, that I, I kept after I retired, and um, the, num- the numbers in those days were opposite to what they are now. The, the uh, front row was one and was um, 13, 15, <coughs> and the hooker was, was 14, and the fullback, <coughs> fullback was number one. So it was different. But with the jersey, so if you were graded fourth grade. Oh, in, the, in the early days when I first started playing with the club, <coughs> um, you had to buy your own jerseys. And when, when grading came out at the start of the season, Everyone graded in first grade. They were they were numbered from one to fifteen. Second grade was numbered from sixteen to thirty, and so on. So if a new player in those jump, they number jumper for the whole year because they just give you the number and you put on your own jumper. And uh, if you you were injured or playing fourth grade at the start of the season, you could finish up with number sixty eight jumper. And if you got into first grade, you'd be running around in first grade playing. In number 68. So was every club like that? All the clubs were like that. Yeah. So did you see many large numbers in the whole time when that happened? Or? Well, there used to be a doctor, Dr Tom O'Connell, who used to only play fourth grade. He was, used to do a lot of doctor work with us. And he used to always play number 100. <laughs> always. You always had number 100. Top All right, top. okay. Now, the other jersey you got up there is a state jersey, and that, that's a pretty incredible jersey. Can you tell us a story of that jersey? Yeah, well, the state jersey is when I got picked in the New South Wales side to play the Wallabies after after uh, the Wallabies toured South Africa and came back with the best performance of any side that ever gone to South Africa. So they decided to put a game on and, and show the Sydney public how good this Wallaby side was, and I got picked in the New South Wales side to play him. Plus, there was also Roddy Phelps and Reggie Sutton from Parramatta, and Ivan Mann was a reserve. Well, we played them at the sports ground, and we happened to beat them. So, even though I've never played for Australia, I played against Australia and had a win. Oh, great stuff. And you've got the program there too, is it? Yes. Any notables in there that is that Australian side? In the Australian side, well, it's all all the top players from that year, from that year, like Cat Pole and and Thornets and John White and Greg Davis, Jerosimo and um, Dick Marks, Barris Elwood, Phil Hawthorne, Ken Catchpole, Terry. And, and, and in the New South Wales side. In the New South Wales side, uh, well, Roddy Phelps. And uh, the South of course. <laughs> the, yeah, there was a fair few of them went on. Tony Miller, who, who was one of the hardest front rowers that ever played for Australia and held the record at that time for most most caps for Australia, was in that side. So, yeah, we had a good, pretty good side against.
So why was Tony Miller called Slaggy, you know? No, I don't know, but he was <laughs> he was a hard player, but he, he was he was a fairly good bloke off the field. He was really good because I played in a fair few Barbarian games and at the stage Slaggy was, he was running the Barbarians and uh, he used to make it, our trips away, really, really good. He was a great, great fellow. And you, you played loose head prop. Well, I and, 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 but nobody actually ever really intimidated you at all? No, I never, I never had any trouble really. I know when coming to Parramatta, like they had the props union, like you spent half your life butting heads with each other, so it was like whether you won or lost, you were still working your tail off. Yeah, just plenty of head button and that sort of stuff. <laughs> okay, and we're talking about tough players. The, the last one, uh, Jersey, I'd like to talk about, and I think you can see it on the film news, is the all black one behind. Us. Can you tell us the story of that one? Yeah, well, that is um, when Rory Price played his first game against New Zealand at the cricket ground. He uh, changed jumpers after the game, and uh, his father gave me that jumper. That's, that's oh, that's Bluey. Bluey, Bluey Price. Yeah, yeah Price. Okay. He, he gave me the jumper, and it's. Uh, the All Black jumpers that Ray Price swapped after his first Test match. And so, why did, why, did, why did Kevin give it to you specifically? You think because you kept him on the well, straight and narrow, or? Well, I, I was um, Ray's captain right through his rugby union day, so oh. I suppose that well, that's I a, had that's a bit to do with it. That's a great honour, isn't it? Too because you know Kevin, Kevin himself, I think, played for North Sydney first grade, and he'd be a fairly good. A fine eye for good players. Okay, I guess to, to finish off now, well, thank you very much uh, for your time. Is there anything else you'd like to add or that we've forgotten or you'd like to put in? No, that's, that's about it, yeah. Okay. And then on behalf of the, you know, the club and being, having played with past players and present players and things like that, we do thank you and, and, and Margaret for allowing you to play and, and be involved in our lives over those last, you know, how many years now? 40 years or something or other if not longer. But thank you for your commitment and dedication to the club and, and we wish you all the best at 74 years of age. Hopefully I look back good when I'm 74. I know Margaret's much younger. <laughs>